Hi, my name is Bjergsen from Team Solo Mid, and this is my solo lane tactics guide to Kogma vs. Orianna. For runes, I like to go Magic Pen Reds, HP Scaling Yellows, AP Scaling Blues, and Flat AP Quents. Um, the reason I go AP Scaling Blues is even though the lane is a bit hard early on, Kog'Maw is really playing to scaling. Like, you don't play to win the laning phase, you just play to scale and you play for later in the game. That's why I'm going for all these scaling and late game runes. For Kog'Maw's Masteries, I like to go 2109. It is a really standard AP mage page, other than I get the spell weaving on Kog'Maw, because he does have a, quite a bit of auto-attacking, and after getting some auto-attacks off, it increases your spell damage, so it just synergizes very well with getting auto-attacks off and then spamming your ults in teamfights. Uh, for utility, you can choose between going Culinary Master for the Biscuit or Runic Affinity for the buff duration. Uh, I personally prefer the Biscuit because Kogma has a fairly weak laning phase and it helps out a lot early. But if you want to play slightly greedier and play for the longer blue buff timer later in the game, that's also a choice you can make. For the level 1 on Kogma, I'd like to go W. Since Orianna likes to go up and trade with auto attacks a lot at level 1, it helps you can uh, trade back using that extra damage on your auto attacks. Um, at level 2, I like to go E, because Orianna is a very low-range champion, and having that slow, and then using your W for the auto attacks can actually help you go even, or maybe even slightly ahead in trades. On Kogma, pretty much if you go even in trades, you're already doing great, because you want to get tier, and you just want to scale later into the game. So getting E at level 2, and again at level 3, just to keep him at range and using the slow for you to get free farm or trades when she's out of range. Um, for maxing, I like to max E, of course, for the wave clear and long-range harass. Q for the shred and burst, and leveling ult whenever you can. For starting items, I like to go Doran's Ring, and really play to farm and go to get the even CS and play to get tier of the goddess as early as you can. Uh, you're not really going to be winning the lane early as Kog'Maw, so just focus on using your pots efficiently and not taking stupid trades that you don't need to take. Just make sure you get that tier of the goddess. After tier, get Sorcerer's Shoes and Loot and Seco as soon as you can. That's your major mid-game power spike, is those uh, Tier of the Goddess, Sorcerer's Shoes, Loot and Seco, and level 11, and that's where you can really start doing a lot. After that, uh, you should be upgrading your Tier to Seraph's Embrace as soon as you have the full stacks, and with that, Haunted Guys and Void Staff go very well, since Kog'Maw has high base damage, so Magic Pen pays off well. Uh, for the last item, you can choose between Death Cap or Zhonya's. Zhonya's is more of a defensive option, and uh, Death Cap is more of the greedy option, but Kogma does have really long range, so oftentimes you can play him with a full offensive build with no defensive items. At level one, you're gonna be ha you're gonna have W, and she's likely gonna have Q or E. If she has E, just make sure that if she wants to get an auto attack trade uh, trade with her shield, she has to walk into your creeps, and you can use your creeps and your W to trade back. At this point, you just want to go even and get to level two or three, where you can start using your E to outrange. Uh, again, at level 2, having the slow and having the range from your auto attacks helps you keep her at range while farming and just getting to that tier. I can't stress enough that your main goal on Kog'Maw is just to get tier and play safe early game. At level 3 and 4, uh, you just want to make sure Ori can't force as many trades on you and you're getting a lot of farm. If she ever walks up on you, you can pop your W and E and get some trades back. Even though you want to be playing passive, you don't want to just let her do whatever she wants to. You need to be able to trade back, and you need to trade back when the time is right. Um, she generally has the advantage this early in the game, so just make sure that whatever trades you pick, you're going to come out even or ahead. Uh, around level 5 is generally the time where you'll have enough mana to get your tier of the goddess, and it's also the level where two of your E, your Voidus, can clear the backline minions. So around level 5, I like to actually look to push a lane and get go back and get my tier of the goddess, and then as you return to lane, you get level 6 with tier, and that's where you can start actually trading back and being a force and use that extra mana to poke people out of lane. For Orianna's ulti, you want to try to stay out of range as much as you can using the slow of UE and just your alt range, but she has a lot of kill potential if she manages to get that alt onto you and has someone like her jungler come up. Kogma is very vulnerable, so just make sure you're staying at as far back as you can while still getting trades. For the place on this matchup, you want to be playing really safe and just getting as much farm as you can. Even though Kogma is a weak laner, around level 7, where you can one-shot the backline using E and R, is, is this a place where you can start being a farming monster? You can choose to play aggressive, because Orianna does get outranged by you quite a bit. So around that like level 7 to 9 point is where you can start either trading or playing to push and maybe farm jungle camps. Pretty much what you want to do in any matchup with AP Cog is get as much farm as you can, get tier stacks, and scale into the late game. And this is a matchup where you can do that very well. Thanks for watching this solo lane tactics guide. If you enjoyed it, then you can take a look at my other guides here on lawclass.com.